Jesus, we want to take a step back uh, from the midst of all that's going on. Jesus, we need peace. And the only way that we can find peace is in you. We may have temporary peace when all this is over, but the stress of life will continue to hit back at us. And so, Jesus, we, we, we come before you to ask that you may your peace, which transcends above all understanding. And God, right now, there's a lot that we do not understand. Will it shield our mind? Will it guard our heart? So, Holy Spirit, come. Come into every bedroom, every living room, every dining room, every space that anyone is tuning in right now. And would you fill them with your peace? Would you prompt them? Would you open up their ears, their eyes, their senses, their hearts to you? We ask Jesus that the, you will lead the way. We ask that Jesus that the, you will change us through and through. God, I pray my, for myself, may I not simply be a speaker of your word, Lord, because that's just so easy to do. I desire to be like you, and I desire to live out these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The crisis that uh, we are in right now is caused because of a virus that has mutated from an animal into a human being. And it's causing quite a scare. Uh, there are a lot of facts and there are a lot of misinformation that are out there. But regardless of what is out there, there's one thing for sure. Uh, we are scared. We are afraid. We are worried about so many different things. Uh, in fact, if you think about the 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 coronavirus, um, there are certain things that we do know and there are certain things that we do not know. Uh, first, the first thing we know is this, is that the coronavirus is actually very quite infectious, um, that it, it longs to find another host and reproduce itself and, and to really to infect a, a, another host. That's why, you know, we've been encouraged to social distance. Um, there's another thing we do know, it's more deadlier than the seasonal flu. I believe... Um, uh, what they're releasing now is that the mortality rate is about 1%, um, which is significantly higher than the seasonal flu. And I think because of this, it has raised up so many great fears and concerns. And I think one of the reasons why it's raised up so many great fears and concerns is because of the unknown. And things that are unknown right now is we really don't have a cure for it. Uh, the other unknown is we really do not have a vaccine for it. And because of these things, it has raised up so much fear and concerns of what is going on. But I'd like to suggest to you something that is even more potent and more dangerous than the coronavirus. Uh, it's actually the sin virus. And this virus has a 100% infection rate. This <laughs> sin virus actually has a 100% mortality rate. This sin virus not only has a 100% mortality rate, uh, it is also, it, it shows many different types of symptoms. Uh, because if you and I were born after Adam and Eve fell, uh, then guess what? We have been infected by the sin virus. But many of us, we, we live our life not really worrying or caring about how the sin virus has affected us. Uh, we just simply continue to live our life without fear, without worry, without any other thought. Uh, we continue to respond to it. In fact, we, we continue to infect each other as well with it. Uh, we do sin to each other and we do sin to ourselves. Uh, and the reality is this, is the sin virus that everyone will die because of this. But the beauty of this uh, sin virus is this, is that there's also hope for that as well. Uh, in fact, that hope came with Jesus Christ into this world. And when Jesus came into this world, he gave hope to fight against the sin virus. And many of us know this as that, uh, well, Jesus died for our sins, and, and because of that, we will have eternal life. And, and so we look at the mortality rate and say, you know what, I will live again. 
I'm not afraid of that. And so we enter into that and then we just simply leave it as that. Uh, most of us look at Jesus simply as our Savior without realizing that Jesus has many different roles, you can say, or, or many different facets of him that we do not appreciate, nor do we value in our life, nor apply in our life and live in accordance to that in our life. Um, we've been speaking in this sermon series uh, in focus, different portraits of Jesus. We, we've been saying Jesus is not just simply our Savior, but Jesus is our King. And not only is Jesus our King, uh, but he is also our sanctifier. And today I'd I like to share with us uh, about Jesus Christ, our healer. Uh, in a time like this, I, I think this is what we need to hear. We need to be reminded that Jesus is our healer. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for us to take a look at a very uh, famous verse that we often use and we often know as a Christian. And it's found in Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 5. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that has brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. One of the fascinating things about the death of Jesus Christ isn't that he gives us eternal life, but he also brings healing. Right? The passage that we just read that Isaiah wrote, he says this. He said, he took up. Uh, this word took up means to put on his shoulders. He took up our pain. And when we think of this word pain, a different translation of this uh, word pain is, is sorrow, uh, emotional pain, emotional brokenness. And also we see that he also took up our sufferings, right? The, or another translation would be our infirmities which means sin. And if you look at these two uh, aspects, it tells us that Jesus brings healing emotionally and spiritually. Uh, we know in uh, other passages throughout Scripture in the Gospel uh, that Jesus also brings healing physically. And so when Jesus died on the cross and when we say that Jesus is our healer, we believe that Jesus heals us emotionally physically, and spiritually. I believe most of us do not have a problem in believing that Jesus can heal us spiritually. Um, quite simple. We are once dead because of sin, and now we are alive, and so we are healed. But I think most of us have a difficulty in accepting and believing and receiving and proclaiming and declaring that Jesus can heal my emotions, and that Jesus can heal me physically. In fact, most of us as Christians, we have allowed the world that is around us to rob us of what Christ can do. We, whenever we have experienced emotional brokenness, the first thing we want to do is we want to move it to the mental health world and say, they're the ones that can heal. Uh, when it comes to physical illness, we basically say, to the medical world, they're the only ones that can heal. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, I believe that there's value and there's importance in seeking mental help and also physical help when we're ill. But sometimes, because of this perception, we only have a one-mind track, and we cannot believe that Jesus is our healer, that he can heal us mentally and physically. I don't know if you realize, but... Uh, the, this crisis has revealed so much about us as hu humans. It has revealed uh, much brokenness. It has revealed many different things. Um, I, I believe statistics are beginning to say that uh, there has been so much uh, greater amount of phone calls coming in because of dis domestic violence or domestic uh, disputes. Uh, what that basically means is there's a lot of argument going on in homes today. Yes, if you're married, and <laughs> uh, I'm sure that these last few weeks has been a very trying time. Um, 
you made you wonder if the spouse you marry is the one that you really married, if you really love them, or are they for real? Because they agitate you, they get you angry, all this stuff <laughs> is beginning to rise to the surface. Sometimes you feel rejected, sometimes you feel they, they, they don't care for you, sometimes they feel like you know, you're, you're alone in this. Uh, and if you have children, um, the social distance rule does not apply to children. Uh, they do not want to be six feet away from you. Trust me, I can testify about that. Not only can I testify about that, my children can, because they always tell me, Daddy, I'm lonely, and I'm sitting right next to them. And they want to get closer and closer. But <laughs> this is what happens right now in, in, in the midst of homes. People are sheltered in, and somehow in the loneliness, and not only in the loneliness, but in the unknown, it raises up a lot of brokenness. A lot of things that we need to bring Jesus to heal. And I'm sure that the, when we get out of this, we'll have, uh, we'll, we'll have shock and trauma after this because we wouldn't know how to engage the world once again. And that is why we desperately need Jesus to heal us emotionally. I, I can tell you countless stories of people who are healed emotionally by Jesus. Uh, in fact, this is how our church began. Our church began not in this room, but in the room upstairs uh, in my living room. And at that time, it was just a small gathering of people coming together. And, and there was just a few of us. And our goal was simply to seek Jesus and, and to hear from him. And in the midst of seeking Jesus, we realized that Jesus revealed a, a lot of deep emotional brokenness uh, in many of us. Some of us uh, suffered from many father wounds, and some of us suffered from mother wounds, and so, some of us suffered from abandonment and rejection. But when we invited Christ uh, to those areas of our life of emotional brokenness, somehow healing took place. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to describe it. But people felt peace. People felt healing. There were a lot of tears. Uh, there was a lot of freedom that took place. And that is a privilege that we have because of what Christ did on the cross. This prophecy wasn't just something that spoke about something in the future. Because in 1 Peter, Peter said the same thing, that it was by his wounds that we were healed. In chapter 1, in chapter 2, verse 23 through 25, in essence, he's really repeating uh, the passage that was prophesied in Isaiah. And Peter was saying, that took place for the early church. And that also takes place for us today as well. And so we can be healed emotionally. We can find wholeness emotionally. We can find healing for mental health. And uh, I remember when I was studying for my doctoral studies, my professor said this. He said, we have, the church has allowed the world to rob us of our right to be doctors as well into this well. Because we are doctors as well. We represent the greatest healer the world has ever seen. Christ is our healer. He died on the cross. He carried all of our burdens all of our sorrow or all of our emotional and mental health issues. He carried it. He paid for it. And he could bring healing to it. But we have to proclaim it. We have to declare it. We have to seek it. We have to find it and seek it in his presence. It doesn't mean that we just simply believe in Jesus as an insurance policy because most of us are quite inclined to just to do that. And we do not realize the privilege of what it means to be a child of God. Uh, that we have access to this healing that is found through the atonement, through the blood of Jesus, through His sacrifice upon the cross. That we can experience healing emotionally and mentally. But we also know that Jesus healed physically. And this is a subject in, in a manner that most of us wrestle with. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, 
for most of my Christian life and for most of my years studying theology and, and, and my being educated for and understanding the scripture, I had a conceptional belief that Jesus was my healer, conceptually. Uh, because we believe in a lot of conceptional things. That doesn't mean that we pursue it and live it out in our life. And so I had a conceptional belief that Jesus was my healer. I had a conceptional belief that Jesus can heal emotionally. And I definitely had a conceptional belief that Jesus will, can heal physically. Because quite often when people came to me and asked me for healing, uh, physical healing, my prayers were very carefully choiced words. So that I do not look like a fool if Jesus didn't heal. And when I did pray, my prayers were, Jesus, you do what you need to do. If it is your will to heal, then please heal this person. Quite honestly, that was a very conceptional way of praying for physical healing. Because I had a conceptional belief about the fact that Jesus can heal physically. It wasn't un until I, I, I came to a better understanding of Jesus Christ, my healer, uh, that I realized that Christ also heals physically. Not just in the days of Scripture, not just in the days of old, and not just in some faraway jungle, but Christ heals now and today. That He fe heals emotionally, physically and spiritually. And what I mean by physical healing is just as that. Jesus healing people of their illness, their sickness, the brokenness of their body. And in my own experience, when, when, when I've been praying for people, I, sometimes I, I don't even know what takes place. All I know is that I, I pray by faith. I ask Jesus to, to really come and, and, and have mercy on, on this person. I remember actually in this room uh, when I was having a prayer meeting with a few people and we were praying and I, I simply asked anyone if they had a prayer request. And, and one person said, you know, I've been having trouble hearing from my right ear and I've been going to the doctor and the doctor says, there's nothing I can, we can do about it. They gave me steroids and it, it didn't help. It, my ears, I just could not hear from my uh, right ear. And so at this moment, uh, because I had a better understanding of Jesus as my healer. And I said, you know what, let's pray by faith and, and see where God leads and see if this is God's will and desire uh, that he will bring healing to you today. So I, I, I lay my hands on his right ear and I began to pray for him. And as I was beginning to pray for him, I, I, I felt this warmth in, uh, from my hands. And then I asked the person, do you feel anything? And he's like, your hands are really hot. I said, okay, then at this moment, we just said, Jesus, whatever you are doing, we ask for more. After the prayer, I didn't think of anything of it. I didn't think that, you know, he'll be healed or, um, or of anything. And it wasn't until like a, a week later after I saw him, I asked him, hey, uh, by the way, how's your ear? I, I was wondering, you know, if, if it gotten any better. And he said, you know, a, a very strange thing took place. After I went home, my ears just started cleared up and I could hear. And, and he thought of it as nothing. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, and these are, are a few of the examples that I, I have seen and I have personally experienced of seeing Jesus as our healer. And don't get me wrong, God can choose not to heal because we know that in passage. Because the Apostle Paul prayed for healing uh, for this thorn in his body, but Christ never took it away. But there are times that Jesus will heal. But the question is, do we believe? The question is, do we e will we even access that privilege? Will we even dare to ask Jesus for it? I, I you know in a crazy time like this, where we feel that there's no healing for the coronavirus, um, it's scary. It makes us feel hopeless. But when Jesus died on the cross, He gives hope. Not just hope for eternity, but hope for here and now. That He can heal us spiritually. 
He can heal us emotionally. And He can heal us physically. That is hope. That is hope that comes from our privilege as a child of God. We can ask because of what Christ did upon the cross. Uh, in Scripture as well, Jesus healed those who, quote, quote, were spiritually inflicted. Um, and, and a better way to describe it in our modern terms is this. Uh, they had demons in them. I know this is something that sounds so mystical, so magical, so scary, so uh, uh, movie theater-like. But Jesus does that too. Jesus heals those, uh, for lack of a better term, has demons inside of them. We see it throughout Scripture, and He does it today as well. And I'd like to share with you too that I've experienced that with people. That I don't want to get into detail because I think it's a very private thing uh, for people. But people have demons. And we need Jesus to liberate us because they cloud our thoughts. They cloud our mind. Sometimes it causes us to want to commit suicide. Sometimes it whispers words like nobody cares for you. Oh, you should just go die. Sometimes it, it, it throws thoughts and entertain into your mind that says, you know what, you should just drive yourself off the road. Um, those sometimes aren't just a, a, a mental thing that is caused by depression or anxiety. There's something spiritual that's happening there. And the amazing thing is this. Jesus can heal us from that as well. When we say that Jesus is our healer, we believe that he took upon his shoulder. He placed it upon his shoulder. Our emotional brokenness, our physical brokenness, our spiritual brokenness. And he paid the price. And by his wounds, we are healed. We can access that because the blood of Christ paid for it. He has allowed us to have access for that. Will we even dare to ask Christ now in a time like this? Maybe you're panicking every night. You're finding yourself having shortness of breath. There's anxiety filling you and sometimes your eyes turn blurry and your fingers start tingling and going numb. Your chest feels tight and the only thing that you can uh, think about is the relooping scenarios that are going through your mind of what would happen if you got sick or what would happen if you were infected and infected someone else in your family. If those are the things that has constantly be, been keeping you up at night, tossing and turning, Jesus can heal you. Just invite him in. Invite him into that moment. And Jesus can heal us physically. He can. Only if we ask. But if we do not ask, He won't. This is our privilege as a child of God. Do we dare to ask Jesus? Or are we going to live in the realm of conceptional belief? That I believe conceptually that Jesus can heal me. Or are we going to pursue it as the hope that we long for? And as you are home wrestling with all different fears, all different worries, Invite Jesus. Jesus is our healer. And He can heal us. He can heal us. But only if we want to. Only if we want to. As I sit here in 
the space. And every day as I read the news, I, I, I see the body counts go up. And I see the infection rates go up. I can't help to be overwhelmed by that as well. Uh, when I go on the grocery shopping, and if you go out grocery shopping, you know that uh, one once was a simple chore has become a, a very scary event because you don't know. Everything around us is causing us to lose hope. Everything around us is causing us to lose hope. And so we need Jesus. We need to find our hope once again. Because it's there. It's there because Jesus died on the cross. It's there because Jesus is our healer. This crisis, it's here. It's not going anywhere. But the question is, are we going to access our privilege as a child of God in the midst of this crisis? Are we going to ask Jesus for healing of the fears, of the worries, and even of the physical ailments? Are we going to strive to break free of the demons that are inside of us? Yes, I know. Some of you have demons. I know. Just look at the way that you live your life in secret, in the darkness. Freedom. Hope. Wholeness. It's there. It's there in Christ Jesus. As an Alliance family of churches, we believe that Jesus is our healer. Not just a conceptional truth that we believe, but a truth that we aim and we long to live it out. Let us find hope in Jesus, our healer. Let us find peace in knowing that even if something were to happen to us, there's hope because Jesus can heal us. Imagine, along with me, two scenarios that can play out when this is over. And there will be an end to this crisis. It could be a week, it could be a month, it could be a year, or it could be a little longer. I know that's a scary thought. But imagine what would happen after this crisis is over. I can imagine that some of us will be even more vigilant in being OCD uh, in the way that we wash our hands. By the way, my hands are red and they're blistered every time because I, I, don't, I don't know how, much time, how many times I wash my hands in a day. Um, we, we may be very cautious about the type of people that we're close to. Uh, so many different scenarios. We could be such fear-based in the way that we live our life after this is over, that every cough, uh, any public space, we feel nothing but anxiety. Yes, it's a very scary thought that after this is over, that some of us will come out even worse than we first entered. Uh, some of us will continue to believe the lies that we believe about ourselves. Some of us will be so amplified by our emotional brokenness and hurt from the past that causes us to reject people even more and more. And some of us who have demons uh, will realize that after this is over, we've invited even more in. That's a likely scenario that can happen. Very likely scenario if we do not invite Jesus to be our healer. 
But imagine in this time of being sheltered in, where God seems to try to take away different distractions, but you continue to try to cling on to all so many other distractions. Imagine in, instead of allowing these distractions to occupy your mind each day so that you can get on to the next day. Imagine if you just simply slow down and look at the emotional brokenness that's there. And then to ask Jesus to bring healing to that, to be set free from living your life in that way. Imagine the physical ailments that you had and that you're so af you're just afraid to go to the doctor right now or they just it just raises a lot of fears and concern. Imagine laying your hands upon yourself and praying for the cough and ask Jesus to clear it. Well, how about those of us who are in spiritual bondage? by the demonic forces that wants to take a hold of us. Imagine if we got to a place in our life that we said, I'm no longer going to live my life that way. And I'm going to reach out for help to find freedom. I'm going to ask Jesus to set me free. Imagine the type of person you will become when you're finally set free into this world again. I can, because if we did, that will mean that we did not just simply have a conceptual thought, an idea of Jesus as our healer, but we passionately pursue it in our life. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that uh, we need to deny medicine or mental health. But what I am saying is, we have given up Jesus' right to heal us because we trust in others more than Him. And maybe for us as Christians, we need to once again declare, proclaim, and live out that Jesus is our healer. Would you join with me in a word of prayer? Jesus, our eyes are fixed upon you in the midst of this crisis. We know that the, you are our great healer. We know that the, you are able to do all things. We know that you can set us free from the bondages from the emotional turmoil. We know that you can heal us. That is something you can do. But Jesus, we confess that we lack the faith in asking you. Please forgive us, Jesus. We ask now that the, you'll give us the faith to believe. Not only to believe, but to pursue you as our healer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thankful for you in joining us uh, this morning. I hope you are blessed, and I long to see you uh, in uh, many of our online gathering. Uh, and I can't wait until I'm able to see you physically. Uh, give you a hug, a handshake. Uh, I know they're probably going to discourage from <laughs> us from that when we are uh, back to normal, but when that day comes, I, I long to celebrate and party with you because I miss all of you. Uh, be blessed, be safe, and most of all, be at peace.